FET characteristics. Really simple experiment, and I'm not exaggerating. So, this is for your ends and practical exams, so I'll be really precise. Fine, first part in. You can basically write this on the question paper that you've given, but I'll still tell you what you're finding out. So, the aim of the experiment is to plot two graphs. That's the input characteristics and the output characteristics. However, it's not just plotting these graphs. What we are finding out is the drain resistance, and the drain resistance is obtained from the input graph and the transconductance. The transconductance can be obtained from the output characteristics graph. Apart from this, there's two other things that we have to calculate, and that is the pinch of voltage and the amplification factor, both of which I'll get to later. And now we come to the next part of the experiment, that is the graphs and the formulae. I'm combining both together. Okay, so the model graph, this is how the model graph should look like. But for those of you all who find it a little hard to remember, just know that drain current, current on the y-axis and voltage on the x-axis, right? And uh, the formulae. So the first part is the drain resistance and that you take the reciprocal of the slope obtained from this graph. And that is just given here and that's the drain resistance. However, for transconductance, you this you don't you need not do this. Just take the output characteristics graph and then find slope, you know, like AB by BC. And that's what's given there. And now we come to the third, that's the amplification factor. And this is nothing but just you just multiply these two values, and that's mu. Pinch of voltage, well, this this is directly obtained from the graph. You just use the input characteristic graph, that is the drain characteristic, and just calculate BP here. That's, that's about it. Okay, so we finished the, finish the formula, we finished the model graph, we finished the aim. What's next is the circuit diagram, which is actually quite simple. Again, I know many of y'all uh, find it hard and confusing to memorize circuit diagrams because many, let's be honest, many of the circuits in this year's experiments are very simple. So, when you when you enter the exam ball and once you pick up the question paper, all they'll ask you to do is stand next to your experiment. And that's all. Your experiment is what you need to draw this circuit diagram. Okay, so if you notice very closely, all we need to do is make a mental image, right? So use this as your sur base circuit diagram. Okay, yeah, I said they were similar, right? Let me show you how. So this is VGG, this is VGG, right? VDD and VDD, right? For the base connections, when you're coming to the circuit diagram, all you need to do is join these two together. We'll come to that in detail later. So I come, I, I've covered your VGG, I've covered VDD. If you look at it, the transistor is here. And again, the transistor is right here, right? However, one must note that there is no 100 kilo ohm resistance in the JFET characteristics. But just add that to your circuit diagram. Draw the, draw the inner working as it is. Like if you notice, there's a lot of resemblance. Here's the transistor, right? It's all internally connected. So it's a transistor. This is your ground. Right, and then here's your resistance, and then here's your milliameter, which should be connected across here. Right, just copy this, and that's for the circuit diagram. Going to the experiment part, connecting the circuit. Right, that's just this is really simple. Takes take these four guys, take four of these guys, and connect the corners. Here, 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 right here, and if you if you have the manual with you or you're looking at the video right now, uh, you can notice that this is the VGG connection through here, this is the VDD connection through here. Okay. After this connection, all the others are internally connected so you don't have to use any wires there. Now if you notice here, it just says, it's just right there, it just says ammeter ID DCM. So I will just connect the positive to the positive and the negative to the negative. For the in input characteristics part of the experiment, all we need to do is connect this connect this voltmeter along VDS. So I'm just connecting it here. Here. This is how you connect the apparatus. But uh, if you've noticed, right, our model graph has not just one curve but multiple curves. Right. Remember, RD drain resistance is calculated keeping VGS a constant. Right. So. We take two scenarios in our experiment. We, we first set VGS to zero volts and check how ID is changing with respect to VDS. And then we set VGS to minus 1.5 volts, again a constant, and then we calculate the change of ID with respect to VDS. Right? So now, you know, when you're starting off with the experiment, right? 
Yeah. How do you actually verify that VGS is set to zero? It's simple. Just take the voltmeter, plug it across the VGS line, like so. Right. And what does the voltmeter say? Zero. So you know where your ground set. Please do not touch this knob when you're changing this knob. All right. Uh, so now I shall connect it back to how it was originally. So now, if you notice, we start off from zero volts. But the minimum is 0 0.02. It's fine. You can just write 0 0.02 and not the value. And we increase the voltage by 0 0.5. So we take 0, 0 0.5, 1, 1 1.5. And for each, we note the corresponding ammeter reading. We go from 0 to 10. Start. Okay, yeah. So that was setting VGS at 0 volts. Now, if you remember, we need to set, we need to get another line. So we just set VGS to minus 1.5 volts. So again, we just see. Oops, it came out there. Never mind. Oh, always set the knobs back. Alright. So VGS was at zero. Now all we need to do is change this knob and set this value to minus 1.5 volts. Which yeah, let's leave it there. 1.5 volts. And now we repeat the same procedure. And again, we start off from zero. That's this is the minimum value, and we increase as 0.5. We increase it by 0.5. Note the value of ID, and so on. And that's your input characteristics tabular column. So we're done with the readings, right? So we need to plot two graphs. That's the input uh, characteristics and the output characteristics. Let's just leave this aside for now. Let's talk about the input characteristics. Right? From this graph, what you need to obtain is your drain resistance. So the drain character from the drain characteristics graph, all you need to do is you need to draw a line. But where do you draw the straight line that is parallel to the y-axis? Well, if you notice in your graph, there'll be there'll be a straight region, that's this part, and then it'll proceed towards the saturated. But just before it proceeds, there's a turnover. At that very point, you draw a straight line. And you draw it straight down to the x to the x-axis, that's your voltage. And that point is called your pinch off voltage. So from this, I mean, we draw another perpendicular that, that, you know, just cuts through one of our plots. We use these two to calculate our slope. And now the inverse of this slope that we obtain here is nothing but the drain resistance. So that coming to the output characteristics curve, that is the transfer characteristics, uh, we similarly, we just take the slope that is AB by BC. Just take a random slope, take it from the region that is straight and well you will get your transconductance value from that slope and this is your transconductance and our fourth quantity that is the amplification factor is nothing but you just multiply these two factors these two that you obtained you get your amplification factor and you're done and now in the result when you're writing the result you just write pinch of voltage drain resistance transconductance and amplification factor please don't forget to write the units for each so, pinch of voltage is in volts, obviously. Drain resistance is in ohms, you know, obviously. Transconductance is in images. Well, if you, because you're taking an I versus V graph, we get it in ohm inverse. Conductance is basically ohm inverse, so it's in images. Amplification factor mu has no unit because it's the, if you, it's the multiplication of both resistance and conductance. So, images in the ohm, it literally gives you one. So, there is no unit for the amplification factor. And that's the end of this experiment.